The following table shows total dollar sales in thousands of dollars for a local retailer for various years. I've also copied the table here below to make it easier to see. First question is, what were these sales in the year 2013? So looking at this column here, notice how the table shows 30, which means the sales were $30,000. But because the dollar sign is already here, as well as the units of thousands, we only enter 30. Next, we're asked by how much did sales increase by each year. So looking at the table, we first need to recognize that looking at the first row, the years all along the first row increase by 1. So if we can determine the increase in the second row, we can determine how much sales increased by each year. So an increase from 16 to 23 is an increase of 7. And also notice how 23 plus 7 is 30, 30 plus 7 is 37, and 37 plus 7 is 44. Because the second row shows an increase of 7, and the first row shows an increase of 1, we know the sales increased by $7,000 each year. So for part B, because we have the dollar sign and the units of 1,000, we only enter 7. And now let's work on part C and D on the next slide. In part C, we're asked to find a linear function that models the above data, or in this case, the data below, and we're told to let x equal 1 correspond to the year 2011, and let s of x be in thousands of dollars. Let's first write the corresponding values of x above the years, so if we include a row for x, x equals 1 represents 2011, x equals 2 represents 2012, and so on. Often a linear function is in the form f of x equals mx plus b, but because our function is s of x, our function will be in the form s of x equals mx plus b, where m equals the slope, which equals the constant rate of change which we actually already know because we already discovered sales are increasing by $7,000 each year, and therefore M equals seven. The units would be thousands of dollars per year. And B is the vertical intercept, which is the initial or starting amount. We need to be careful about this because a lot of times, the first output value from the table is the initial or starting amount, but that's only true when the corresponding input is zero. And notice how the sales of $16,000 corresponds to x equals 1, not x equals 0. So the initial amount is actually going to be the sales in the year 2010, because x equals 0 corresponds to 2010. Analyzing the table, we already know we add 7 as we move to the right to find the amount of sales. So moving to the left, we subtract 7, which means for the year 2010, the sales would be 16 minus 7, which equals 9. And therefore, b, the vertical intercept, is equal to positive 9. So this would be one way to find the value of b. Another way would be to use an ordered pair from the table. So let's also show that method. Assuming we know the slope is 7, we know s of x must equal 7x plus b. And now let's use the ordered pair from this first column, where when x is 1, the sales, or s of x, equals 16. So using the ordered pair 1 comma 16, we can substitute 16 for s of x and 1 for x. And notice how if we subtract 7 on both sides, we still get b equals 9. So now we know the linear function that models the table is s of x equals 7x plus 9. Looking at our question, we only enter 7 here because the x is already there, and then plus 9. For part D, we want to use s of x to predict the sales in 2018. So using the given function, so using our function s of x, we need to make sure we use the correct x value for 2018. Well, again, because x equals 1 corresponds to 2011, x equals 0 corresponds to 2010, so for the year 2018, x would be equal to 2018, the desired year, minus the base year of 2010, which equals 8. So 8 corresponds to the year 2018, because 2018 is 8 years after 2010. So we need to find the value of s of 8, which would be equal to 7 times 8 plus 9, which equals 56 plus 9, which equals 65.
and the units here would be thousands of dollars. So for part D, the dollar sign is already here, the units of thousands is already here, so we only enter 65. I hope you found this helpful.